Hello, and um, welcome to a film called Nomenclature 2, which you won't be surprised to hear follows on from one called Nomenclature 1. And this one's about naming substances that have got halogen atoms in them, um, in particular organic substances and geometric isomers as well. And hopefully by the end of this film, you'll be able to name alkanes and alkenes that, as well as having hydrogens attached to the carbon atoms, also have halogens, so that's chlorine, bromine, iodine, maybe fluorine, atoms like that attached to the carbon atoms in the chain and also you'll be able to understand what we mean by cis and trans when we're talking about geometric isomers okay so it should be quite a little short film um, we'll start by talking about halogenoalkanes that is to say alkanes that have halogens attached and these three um, halogenoalkanes that you can see here have all got bromine attached to them and they've got something in common as well. They've all got four carbon atoms in a row. Well, these two have got four in a row, but these, this one's got four with a branch. So let's use our knowledge of how we name hydrocarbons to help us out with this. This is butane because the longest chain is four carbons long. So it's going to start with bute. And it's going to end in ane because there's only single bonds. There's a bromine attached, and it's attached to the first carbon in the chain. So this molecule would be called 1-bromobutane. Okay? This one here, the only difference between the two, because they've both got a four-carbon chain, is the fact that the bromine's been attached to the second carbon in the chain. You could say it's attached to the third, one, two, three, but that would use a bigger number than using two. So we always go for the lowest number possible, and we're going to call that 3-bromobutane. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated, because as well as having a halogen attached, it's also got a branch in the molecule, but we should be able to cope, because we, if we're able to name alkanes, we can name this alkane. So this is just a case of adding a bromine to it. So now, the longest chain we've got here is 3. We've got single bonds, so it's an alkane. So it's going to be called something propane, because prop is the prefix for three. Okay, but this propane has also got a branch on it. So there's a methyl group attached to the second carbon. So I'd call it 2-methyl propane. That would be if it didn't have a halogen attached to it, but it does. So I've also got to say that it's 2-bromo because the bromine is also attached to that second carbon in the chain. So 2-bromo, two 2-methylpropane. Two so that's how we name alkanes that have one halogen attached to them. Okay. Looking at it from a slightly different perspective now, so starting with the names and we'll draw the structures out, this is some names that tell us that there's more than one halogen attached, or maybe more than one type of halogen attached as well. So here is a name that tells us something about a halogenoalkane. It's an alkane because it ends in ane. It's got four carbons because it's got bute in it. So let's just draw a longest carbon chain of four carbons. All right. It's got a methyl group attached to the second carbon. So there's a one carbon branch on the second carbon in the chain. Each carbon has four bonds. So let's just draw those four bonds there remembering that they've already used some of them. Okay, and now let's see what the rest of the name tells us. This tells us that there's three bromine atoms in the molecule, and they're at positions one, two, and three on the four carbon chain. So there's one on the first carbon, there's one on the second carbon, and there's one on the third. You might wonder why I didn't call this the first carbon. Well, that's because if this is 2-methylbutane, then we've already decided that that is the second one. Okay, so let's just fill in all the hydrogens very quickly. Shouldn't forget to do that, because otherwise it's not clear what's on your molecule. Okay, and there we are. There's the structure for 1-2-3-tribromo-2-methylbutane. Sounds like a very complicated name, but it's not a very complicated molecule, I suppose. Now, this one here is also 2-methylbutane, so I'll start with that same skeleton of carbons. Okay, there's four of them with one branch on the second carbon. All right, but this time we've got 
not only bromine atoms but also chlorine atoms okay now there's only one chloro because it doesn't say di or tri and that's on the second carbon along so here we are there must be a chlorine here and as well as that there's two bromine atoms and they're both on the third carbon because three three if it had said one three I'd have had one on the first and one on the third but it doesn't it says three three so they're both on the third carbon and all the rest of these things will be hydrogens okay so there's how we name alkanes that have halogens in them okay and hopefully that's clear if not maybe rewind it and have a look at it again um, anyway there we go with the next slide now these are halogenoalkenes so not alkanes anymore but alkenes so they've got a double bond in them naming it shouldn't be a frightening thing because we know a system for naming alkenes this alkene's got two carbons in it so it's called ethene and it's got a chlorine attached to either the first or the second carbon but if you think about it it doesn't matter which of those carbons is one and two because if I attach the chlorine here instead of there it wouldn't be a different molecule I've just turned the molecule around so this is called chloroethene I haven't had to say where the chlorine is because it doesn't matter which of the carbons it's on and there's only one chloro so I don't say die or try so on and so forth right now here's another molecule this one's got three carbons in its longest chain and a double bond so it's going to be called something propene I might have to say where the double bond is but if you think about it with propene it doesn't matter because prop1ene is the same as prop2ene okay so I don't have to say where the double bond is now then starting from this as our first carbon okay one two three there's a bromine on the second carbon and on the third why have I gone for this as my first carbon because that's where the double bond starts and I decided to call it propene so we've got two bromine atoms so we're going to go dibromo dibromo propene and they're on the second and third carbons so two comma three dibromo propene okay and finally looking at some geometric isomers geometric isomers remember exist only in alkenes because you've got to have a bond that you can't freely rotate like a double bond okay and you can hopefully see that these two molecules are exactly the same they'd have the same structural formula let's just start that again um, they'd have the same structural formula which is CH3 CH CH CH3 so does this one here okay so that means that they've got the same molecular formula same structural formula so they must be geometric isomers because although their structures are different their structural formulas are the same so going back to our isomers film that tells us they're geometric isomers now in this one hopefully you can see that the two big methyl groups are on the same side of the double bond whereas here they're across from one another okay now we're calling this molecule but2ene because the double bond starts from the second carbon you could say it starts from the third but that would be going heading in the opposite direction you'd be using a bigger number than you'd have to okay here they're on the same side so same side we use this prefix cis on across from each other or on different sides of the double bond we use the prefix trans so cisbutuene and transbutuene to say where those two groups are now you might be wondering well what happens if I let's say if I had one of those methyl groups there in, let's just start that again let's just wipe the diagram and start again if I had one there instead of here so if that was an H and that was a CH3 could I have geometric isomers then well no I couldn't because it doesn't matter which way round these two are or which way around those two are you're always going to have an H across from the CH3 or you could say you're always going to have an H on the same side as the CH3 so in order to have geometric isomers if you think about it you have to have two different groups attached to the carbons at each end of that double bond so try and remember that if you see a molecule that's got two different groups attached at either end of the double bond 
then you're going to have geometric isomers and you're going to have to use these prefixes cis and trans. Okay, good luck with that.